Hi, we're, we're the Holiness Chuck Club, Club from Nutley, New Jersey, Jersey. And, and this is the Rosie O'Donnell Show. On, On today's show, show, Stephen Weber, Jimmy's investigative report, General Hospital's Maurice Bernard, and Leah Delaria. Hit it, John! Listen, here's the old theme song. What's the name of your Chub Club again? The, the Holy, Holy Mess, Mess Chub, Chub Club. Club. The Holy Mess. The Holy yep. Mess. And why are you called the Holy Mess? We got two reasons. One, we need divine intervention. Right. Big time, big time. Yeah. And the other is that we've got a minister, two ex nuns, and for lack of a better word, a heathen. A heathen! A heathen. Wait, don't They're... tell me! Are you the heathen? Well, they're jealous, Rosie. Oh, I <laughs> wanted to choose the heathen! <laughs> oh, it was it that choose the ex nuns, Rosie. The ex nuns? Mm hmm. Definitely going you with the hat. <laughs> Total, right? Yeah. I got, you got it, Rosie. I got you, you got and it. I'm going. I'm going the corner. Yeah. I'm going you. Oh, oh, so on. The so on. Come on down. Now, what do you have here? What do you have here? Rosie, we have a gift for Turn you. Turn around and, so everyone can see. And we know that, you know, like, you've had a little problem with motivation in that chub club of yours recently. A little and, bit, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and we made this as a motivational tool for. Mary and well, Mason. Listen, listen, Judy, Judy really made this. It. It, works, yeah, yeah. And it works. Look, Rosie, you just keep following that candy <laughs> and you can get you it. It's yours. Follow that candy. Oh. Absolutely works. I don't know if it'll fit my big That's head. Right. But... Yeah. Where, where are you from? Well, Nutley, New Jersey, where the source of the club is. I'm from Clark. And are you all going to come to the 5K on May 23rd? Absolutely. That's our goal, right. Rosie. You're going to run or walk? What do you think? Well, run. we're going to bring up the rear. We're, we're going to walk. Walking. You're going to walk? We're going to walk. Yeah. You we're know what? Run. Since you guys are going to walk, <laughs> I'll walk uh, with right. you. We're going to walk with you. Yeah. I could run it. <laughs> no, I'm going to try to run, but it's tough, as you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, now you got it's a song, hard. ladies? You yes, got we, we do. All right, do let me go. give you a little room. Okay. okay. Get ready. Here we go. Two nuns, a heathen, and a minister. Go. Chocolate and frosting and whipped cream on peach pies. Jellies and fruitcakes and mayonnaise on whole rye. Yodels and ring dings and all things that grudge. This is what we used to pack for our lunch. Now Rosie tells us it's time to get fitter. We do, we do our walking, no time to be bitter. So we just wised up, moved more, and eat less. That's, That's why we call ourselves the holy mess. mess. When the urge hits to eat brownies, we're just here to say, remember, remember our favorite goal to run the 5K. Remember who our sponsor is. If you enjoy Stouffer's Lean Cuisine and Hearty Portion, oh, oh, I love it. Excellent. Have, you ever for love it. Wonderful. have you ever tried the Nestle Sweet Success? Well, yes. Yes, yes. 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 it's great, yes. isn't it? Chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. 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 And chocolate. also, uh, Reebok, a fine company, oh, and one that is yes. sponsoring us. Thank a bag you. for each of you full with a lot of oh, stuff. I will you. see you on May 20th. Thank, 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 thank you very much. much. Thank you, thank you. My pleasure. Say hi to John McKee, the McKee LP.
<laughs> Very nice. After the Chub Club, to have a Dunkin' Donuts desk. Very nice. Whose idea of comedy was this? That is great. This, are these actual edible donuts? Oh that is not gosh, fair to the that's host. That's crazy. Is that unfair? <laughs> There's a few vanilla cream right on top. Boy. Oh my good, Kenny, you that want is one? So great. Come over here, get one. Come here, quick, get it. Come on, get it. I saw him eyeing one. He's drooling you know over he there. Wants one. Kenny, your camera. Oh. oh, and he's on a chub club. He only took a munchkin. He didn't yeah, even take a whole. He's eating less. Kenny's eating less. Right on the show. Well, this thing. For, <laughs> who made this desk for us? Um, does anyone know the Dunkin' Donuts people and um, Knopf's Bakery in Queens? Because they make everything for us, and we love them. And whenever we need That's a baked great. good, we run there, no matter where we are. So if you live in Michigan, Florida, come on up to Queens <laughs> to Knopf's Bakery because right. they're fine and fabulous. And what is this big thing here? Big McGilla. That straw thing. Can't wait to see you at Universal Studio Islands of Adventure in May. Mm. Love your friends at Jurassic Park Island. Oh. It's oh. an egg. It's an egg? It's nice of them. <laughs> that is really out. No, it's sweet. It's, it's probably an egg, like a dinosaur egg or something. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Thank you for sending that. We are going to Universal Studios in May, and uh, there'll be some eggs there, I guess. I don't know. OK. OK. John, what'd you do last night, sweetie? Went to see a show, the yeah. Broadway revival of uh, The Iceman Cometh. Unbelievable. Was it it's, good? It's truly great. Yeah, it's it's so 107 hours long, isn't it's it? It's really, that's four hours it's and 15 four minutes. four hours long. Yeah, it starts at 7 o'clock, the most important thing. It starts it's, at 7. Yeah, so you have to remember that. What uh, is it about? It's great. It's about these Bowery bums, sort of this guy, the salesman comes in and, and tries to change their life. It's really, it's extraordinary. It's really yeah, cool. Yeah, you liked it. I liked it a lot. All righty. Really I great. went to see the most fabulous story ever told at the Minetta Lane Theater last night. Oh, yeah. And Leah Delaria, who is in the show, is a guest today. That's right. What a funny, funny <laughs> night of theater. Paul Rudnick is the author. Yeah. Very funny, very campy story of uh, Paul Rudnick's take on, uh, on the world what it would be like instead of Adam and Eve, it was Adam and Steve. All right. And uh, <laughs> it, it was <laughs> a very entertaining night of theater. And Leah Delaria, who will probably be nominated for a Tony Award for On the Town, yeah. she is uh, starring in it now, and she's going to be here and uh, might even get That's her to cool. sing. That'd be great. Who knew she could sing? So yeah. that'll be fun. She's good. OK, uh, cool. Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Awards. I am the host on May 1st. If you're a kid and you, and you want to um, Come and present an award with us. You can uh, show uh, us your name, address, phone number, and age, and send it on a postcard to the Nickelodeon Kids' Choice Rosie Sweepstakes, P.O. Box 4805, Orlando, Florida, 32802. And uh, you can enter and you can present an award with me. We're getting everything done today. We've got cool. a lot of stuff. Look, what, what is this? This is the Dunkin' Munchkin thrower. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, but it's it not even aimed in the right no way. I can it. shoot it at you guys if I. That's nice. Like that. That's good. Thank you. That's nice. We got a lot of stuff going on today, and Your desk frankly, is so I'm a little cool. distracted by the vanilla cream. Um, it smells so good. Okay, now this is a really great thing. Remember, we had Dr. McGee here from Operation Smile. It's a wonderful uh -huh. organization where a bunch of plastic surgeons in the U.S. go to other countries, including the United States, to poorer areas where families cannot afford medical treatment for their children who are born with facial deformities. And they perform plastic surgery on these children, save their lives in many, many ways, and definitely their self-esteem. Warner Lampert, the people who make Listerine, which I have always <laughs> enjoyed. Yes. <laughs> My that's, double chin. I can't stand nice. that. I have to get liposuction. I'm telling you, I'm getting this summer. I'm gonna get a little look. Are that's you? how I'm gonna bit? look. I'm gonna look like Bernadette Peters all of a sudden. See? <laughs> but this way, I'm frog woman. You know? But this, Bernadette Peters. See? I'm dainty. Frog woman. Dainty. Okay. Anyway, Warner <laughs> Lampert will give one dollar for starting today through April 16th. One dollar for everybody who purchases one of their products, which includes Benadryl, Schlick, uh, pr razor blades, um, all of these different, Quantera, Zantac, any Warner wow. Lampert product, up to one million dollars they're going to give to Operation That's Smile. So, so go buy, buy this, Warner Lampert. All right? I got to move it. There's too much stuff on my desk. But I thank them because, okay, there's just a lot of stuff on my know, desk, and I want to just packed. make a little room. 
Okay, Sudafed also, favorite okay. of mine. All right. Chub Club races begin this weekend. That would be tomorrow for some wow. parts of the country. Yeah. Tomorrow in Atlanta, Georgia, the Avon race. In San Antonio, Texas, the race for the cure. Greensboro, North Carolina, the MS Walk. And in Portland, Oregon, the MS Walk. We're going to tape some of the people running and racing, and we're going to show you them on Monday. And it'll be very cool. exciting to see how they did, and they'll give us little inspiration. Okay. <sighs> A lot of stress going on. What else? <laughs> okay, Sally Jesse. Boy. Sally Jesse <laughs> is still annoying me. She, she keeps now? sending me. Where's the note that goes with this, Jeanette? Is it somewhere? I probably already threw it away. On it's on the desk. No, I, I threw it. I don't know. But this came with a note from Sally Jesse. Two more pieces to this little wood house thing mm -hmm. that she made me. And it was a note, something like, you know, I make this. Oh, here it is. I knew it was here. This is a wall. See where it goes. Try building this with ribbons and bows. Uh. Love Sally Jesse. <laughs> Listen what I did. This is a new thing called an audio card. Yeah. I put my scary face on there. See that? I'm gonna send this to Sally. You make a recording. You go like this. Sally, you die. I'm gonna beat you at this whole thing. You're no crafty woman. Okay. And then you she takes it off. You send this to her. She pushes the button. Sally, you <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Wouldn't let you say die, because that's not nice. Let me say a different thing. <laughs> Sally, you soup. Do you have to hold it the whole time, Jeanette? Uh, maybe that's it. <laughs> 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 Sally, Sally, this is Rosie. Be afraid. Be very afraid. OK, like that, right? And then I'll send this to her, and she'll play it. Sally, Sally, this is Rosie. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> you send that to her. Right there. Look how scary it is. That's Get a close up of that. That's me and my scary face. Oh, Lord. That'll show you a little bit about Sally Jesse Raphael. Okay, so I told you that um, Alan, one of our writers, he has a son who's three mm -hmm. years old, yep. and he's a cutie patootie, and he will only wear a suit and tie. Look, this. Oh. That thing oh is moving. Oh, my God. Oh. oh. Okay, that's a little freaky. That is... Oh, oh, my. my... Don't touch it. What is that thing? Oh. Hello, little monster from. Oh! <laughs> Yikes! Oh, my. Steven Weber's here today. Uh, Jimmy's investigative report. Maurice Bernard and Leah Delaria. We'll be right back. So, you know, every day I get driven to work by a friend of mine, Jimmy. Every day he has little informative tips about buying lottery tickets, about freezing rain. It's not really hell, but freezing <laughs> rain. Remember that one, too? And now he's obsessed with David Blaine, the guy who buried himself. Well, Jimmy, we assigned him his first assignment to be an investigative reporter. Jim, you went there. How was the whole investigation thing? Well, it, it went pretty good and everything. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> like, at first, I didn't think that he was going to be there. That was the whole reason, like, for going. But Yeah, you were, you were convinced it was a hologram, right? I thought it was like, you remember in Star Wars when they had that, like, thing of Princess Leia coming out of R2-D2, like the hologram? I thought it was going to be something like that. And it looked like that a lot. Yeah. But it wasn't, you know? Yeah, and how did you like being a journalist? Was it all right for you? Was it... It was, you know, it was it was cool, but I had like a little bit of problems with like the microphone because I was trying to sort of like keep the mic in front of me while I talked, and then when I had the other person talk, I'd have to put it in front of them. But yeah, yeah. It's like I don't know if you ever tried this, but your brain doesn't work right. You yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> your, your brain is like, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then the person starts to talk, you go over there, and then you bring it back while you're thinking what you should say. So they're talking, but it's you not, can't hear It's them. not easy. It's not easy. All right, well, you did a pretty good job. Take a look at Jimmy's investigative report on David Blaine's burial. <laughs> Hey, 
everybody, it's Jimmy, and um, we're over at the uh, West Side Highway where magician David Blaine is uh, buried himself up under a tank of water. You see, all of these people are here to see him, man. That's amazing. And I'm just trying to figure out, like, why everybody decided to come on down here. What can you say about that? No one knows. Because it's exciting. Do you think that he's really up under there or do you think that he's faking it? He's really under there. You just wait until you see it. <laughs> Someone. So long. Hello, what's going on? I'm standing here with um, Bill, right? Yeah, Bill Kalush. Yeah, uh, he's associated with this whole thing. You're saying that he's really down there? Oh, yeah. yeah. You'll see. Well, come on, man. I heard that he's like maybe at like the Four Seasons or the Marriott or something like that, stowed away in a room with nobody knows about anything like that happening. Well, if he's at the Four Seasons, then who's in the box? That's a good question. Yo, is that Stephen King right there? Hey, Stephen. Uh, Mr. King, Stephen King. <laughs> he looks just like him, man. I swear to God, that looks just like Stephen King. Yeah. Uh, Mr. King. What's that? Oh God, man. Come on, I've read all of your books, man. Come on. No, Stephen. Come on, man. You're not Stephen King. It's not just about publicity and a stunt, but it's about emotion and about people overcoming fears of claustrophobia or fears not to eat or fears to eat. And and we all have fears. And he's here and he's taking care of that. He's, he's overcoming them. Wow, man, that's pretty deep. I feel bad now. I'm sorry, dude. I guess I'm gonna just have to go over there and like check it out. Yeah, he is down there for sure. I didn't think he was down there before, but he's down there now, man. That dude just looked at me. He just waved at me. That dude is down there. Yo, peace out. Yeah! You know what? It's no fraud. This is really happening. I mean, that dude has a lot of guts. This is Jimmy reporting for the Rosie O'Donnell Show. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the really sad thing is, that wasn't even a comedy script. That was just Jimmy there. You did a great job, dude. Uh, well, thanks, bro. I meant, if you ever need it again, just let me know. OK, right. Jimmy, the driver. <laughs> we'll be right back with Stephen Weber. Don't go away. Still ahead, Maurice Bernard. flew into our living rooms as the free-spirited pilot on the hit show Wings. Then he scared America in Stephen King's The Shining. Monday night, you can catch him in the ABC movie Love Letters. Please welcome back to the show my buddy Stephen Weber! Well, hi, Stephen. Hello, yourself. This is, I'd like a, a crawler and... 12 Swiss mud logs. Please. You'd like a crawler. I don't know if do we have any crawlers? Yeah, there's crawlers. You have a crawler. The crawlers form the lip of the desk. I believe that you're allowed to take whatever one you want. They're all edible. Nothing has been sprayed. Really? Yeah. I'll take a bite if you Can do. Can I put my hands behind my back and do it? I dare you to do that. Can you do that? Yeah, but, but hasn't it been hasn't it been sprayed with lacquer so it doesn't melt? This has anything? not been sprayed, has it? Nope, it has. Who said yes? Yeah. You can only eat the top. Good thing you told me that. 
What happened to Stephen Weber? He's an ICU. That's right. He ate That's part right. of Rosie's desk. He ate the bottom. All right, well, as we go to commercial, how about that? You'll lead a top row with me. Oh, sure, okay. All right. We'll, we'll lead our way around. Yeah, and I believe that I could. You actually look very fit. Ah, thanks. I try to keep, you know. Yeah, you're in shape. You're a workout kind of guy. I work out because, you know, in LA, you just you sit in your car a lot and all that. But yeah, I yeah. mean, I've been working out. I was mugged a lot when I was in high school. Mugged? I was mugged because I went, I went to high school back when New York was, was yeah, unsafe. Sugar, yeah. yeah. Uh, before <coughs> our, our mayor kind of made it safe. Yeah. Uh, I was mugged <laughs> frequently and I, I looked forward to getting mugged. And my father got me weights and all that. And, and I used to, uh, you remember in the back of the, uh, I do have sugar on my fingers. Do you remember the back of the comic books? They had the Charles Atlas thing. Yeah, with the sand in the face. Yeah, thing. the insult that made a man out of Mac. Right. Right? That yeah, was yeah. me. Yeah. That was a, hey, quit kicking sand in our faces. That man's the biggest nuisance on the beach. Say I'd punch your face, but you're so skinny, you might dry up and blow away. I'll get even someday. Oh, don't let it bother you, little man. <laughs> oh, boy. That? You really remember, remember that? that? Say. This fella Atlas says he can get me a real body in 30 days. I'll gamble a stamp. I'm tired of being a scarecrow. <laughs> I'll send away for my free booklet. <laughs> and did you do I, that? I did. Oh. I did. And from that day on. From that day on. Later on the beach. <laughs> now I'll kill that bastard or whatever. <laughs> and, you know, sorry, I don't mean to say. But you work out and you eat healthy too, though, you do. I try to eat healthy. Because you guys don't eat out a lot. You know, a lot of people in LA, they go out to we dinner cook. every night. You're cookers. We cook. I yes. cook. I cook. I actually made. Uh, Jambalaya. I mean, if you cook, it, it, I, I cook for like 18 people and you're a real hero. All you have to do is follow directions, essentially. What exactly is jambalaya? Jambalaya is a, uh, what exactly is jambalaya? I've never jambalaya, heard of it. jambalaya is a, it's like a Cajun dish. It's rice and sausage and chicken and shrimp and peppers. It's very spicy. Oh, it's that song. Mambo, mami, no pa, jambalaya. So the gun will have big fun on the bayou. But I didn't know it was a food. No, Dylan? Hank Williams. Oh, Hank Williams. Hank Williams. Can never understand Bob Den Dylan Del to me. Well, he, you know. he's, he's kind of nasal. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't know it was well, a song. It's also a food. So you made it, it. Yes. Did everyone enjoy it? Yeah, everybody liked it. Although, since I had to uh, make it for so many people, I had to, uh, uh, you know, multiply the amount of spice in the. This is a fascinating story. I had to multiply the amount of spice, uh, you know, to to meet the amount of people at the party. And I multiplied the, ca the cayenne pepper, the red pepper, too much. And people were like passing out and sweating, <laughs> and they're wetting themselves, and they were dizzy. You know, <laughs> from, it was so hot. And then I actually called K Paul's in Louisiana, uh, which is the uh, uh, this fantastic restaurant, and uh, and I got the head chef on the phone, and I said, "Listen, you got to help me. Is there anything I could do to quell the spice, which is the actual term used, culinary term, to quell the spice?" Quell the spice. Okay. And he said, he said, "No, man. There's nothing you can do to quell it." He said, uh, no, you just have to, that's a Cajun accent. He <laughs> says, uh, you know, it, listen, are they eating it? I said, yeah. He said, well, then just put a pitcher of cold water and a stretcher. <laughs> and that was it. And that was a true story. So Did you know there was too much spice or not until had no everyone clue, reacted? Until people were like shivering and, and excusing themselves a lot. Yeah. Was Crying. it too hot for you even? I liked it. You I like spicy it. Yeah, things. Yeah. Not I like, me. I prefer salty things rather than sweet things. Really? Uh, See? That's the secret to life. <laughs> Salt I, I, no, I've never said this is too rich. I've never tasted something and said too rich. You, well, know? you know, like if you're if you're crawling in the desert, you think give me salt, give me water, not give me a crawler. If you're on the, you know, crawler, crawler. You know, you don't. Uh, ring ding, ring yodel. ding. Yodel. That would be for me. You know. Yes. Now tell me about Love Letters. I've seen the play. Uh, I've seen it performed on stage many times. Yes, Love Letters is a is a, a play for two actors in a, to be done in a very bare stage, um, and it's about uh, two people who write who have, whose relationship is based entirely on letter writing. It's very romantic, very lovely. It's sort of a, a tragic love story in a way because uh, it's about two people who live through their letters and never quite sort of consummate their relationship emotionally and romantically. And it's very lovely. And I worked with Laura Linney, you know, who's in the Truman, Truman Show. Show. Yes. Yeah, gorgeous blonde Laura Linney. And a Linney. wonderful director, Fantastic Stanley. Fantastic director, a guy named Stanley Donnan. And Stanley Donnan directed um, Singing in the Rain. And he worked on Anchors Away. And he did Charade. And I mean, this guy is a legend. And a couple of years ago in the Oscars, he, uh, he was given a special award. And he accepted it in, in, in a way that was very different and lively. He, 
he sang and danced his acceptance speech. Remember, it was so cute. He did the soft shoe. And it was great, and he enlivened, you know, the the ceremony. And he's a, a great guy. Did good. you bring a clip for us? I think I did. Thank you for doing that. I think that. I did. Would well, you I don't just show set it, it up. Oh, that's a great clip. All right, take a look. It's on ABC Monday night, uh, which would be this Monday. Take a look. Yeah. Last week, I sat by the phone for three hours hoping you'd call. Finally, I called you. Now, we agreed not to use the telephone, Melissa. Mrs. I hadn't Walpole seen you in day. 10 days. In the coming election, darling. Surely, all you can if do I is I just want to be pick up the phone. You're Senator Ladd, aren't you? I met you at the benefit for Bosnia last March. Oh, yes? And you're the missus, right? Ha! <laughs> Don't I wish. Am I interrupting something? Yes, you oh. are. Well. Excuse me. That didn't help. At ABC, <laughs> Monday night. I will tune in and watch. Will it's you? delightful to see you. How's your lovely wife, Juliet? My lovely wife, Juliet, is fine. And uh, she's uh, taking care of me and, yeah. and uh, taking care of each other. And it's, it's beautiful. She's a wonderful person. I adore her. Is she backstage? Thank you. Yeah, of course she is. All she right. Is. Tell her to hang out till after the show. Okay. Okay. Uh, Steven Weber, we'll be right back with Maurice Bernard, and it's on tape because it was from the other day. It's all on a different outfit. Still ahead, Leah Delaria. We're back, and I'm in a different outfit. It's magic. Our next guest plays Sonny on General Hospital. Sort of a charming mobster. Take a look. I don't like being hit. I tend to go kind of crazy. You think you had me pegged, huh? You pride yourself on being a good judge of, of people. You think you had Jason pegged too? But you mistook his loyalty, his compassion for weakness. Big mistake. Jason know what a pig you are? As soon as he's out of town, you hit on me? He doesn't care about you. You're nothing to him. He might have thought you, you were an obligation because of Michael, but that's going to come to a screeching halt when he finds out what you've been doing while he was away. And guess who's going to tell him? Nico was so much nicer on Pine Valley. Nico would never have been like that. Please welcome Maurice Bernard. <laughs> at the Emmys. How are you? Good. Great to see you. Great to see you. I was just telling Maurice that we met years and years and years ago on a plane uh, when you were doing uh, All My Children. Wow. And I was doing stand-up comedy and I was talking to you all about it and it probably ten, annoying you. Ten years ago. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Imagine. Wow. What is this? That's for your charity. General Hospital, look the come, complete look scrapbook. How many people signed it. Signed by the whole cast, Maurice. <laughs> That'll get us a lot of dough, thank you very much. That's very sweet of you. How are you? I'm good, I'm real good. Yeah. Lovely to see you. Are you originally from New York? Because you got that whole New York thing going on. I, it happens when I come to New York, and you know, yeah, my yeah. voice deepens and stuff. But you're from here originally? No, no, San Francisco. San Francisco? Yeah, yeah. You got a whole, like, neighborhood boy kind of thing going well, on here. Know. You know what I mean? Just gonna happen, you know, from, you know, from Brooklyn, from exactly. New York. Exactly. <laughs> was your first show, was your first show All My Children? Yeah, it my was. first screen test. How long were you on that show? Two years. Yeah, and you played Nico. It was a good, it was a good gig, huh? You like that, huh? I love that. It's my favorite show. <laughs> I still like General Hospital. Right. I right. do. I watch all the Channel 7 ones. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we have people here from the other networks. I don't have a clue what's going on. <laughs> I pretend. I'm like, oh, Linda, I love you. Another world. Yeah. Never saw it. Never. You know, I only watch the Channel 7s. You know what I mean? Well, they, they created that role for me. I, I was fortunate, you know? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Were you, were you doing plays or something before that? A little bit. Two plays I did in San Francisco, and they flew me out to New York to screen test for, for Nico, and I didn't get the role, but they created one for me. And did you always want to be an actor growing up? No. What did you want to do? I didn't know. You didn't know? Because <laughs> you didn't seem like, you know, an actor guy. You seemed like you'd be, you know. Yeah, I didn't know, but thank God it happened, because I didn't, uh, there's nothing else I can do, really. Yeah. <laughs> Your fans are a little crazy, do you think? Yeah, let me tell you a story. Rosie. All right, tell me a story. Uh, I was at McDonald's once. This is Nico. And um, uh, my wife, well, she was my girlfriend at the time, but 
she was buying me a Big Mac. And so I, this person came up, uh, won an autograph, then another one, then another one. There was about eight girls hanging around. So my wife says, honey, let's go. So we get out and they followed us. And we walked a little faster and they walked a little faster. And then we ran, they ran. Oh no. So we just booked, you know, through, through houses and stuff. And they were following us screaming, Nico, Nico, come back. <laughs> really? And uh, we got away though, we got away. You know what, Maurice? That was me. Oh, that was you. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I figured that. <laughs> it could have been, though. It yeah, could have been me, you that's know? that's right. Do, do, were you a fan of the soaps before? I don't think you are, were you? No, you know what's funny? I was a fan. I, was, uh, I watched all my children in General Hospital. Those were the year two. And, and I ended up being on both. What'd you do during that One Life to Live hour? Uh, I, you took I, a shower or something? I just, I was, at, I was at home, I think, sleeping or something, you know. Oh, because they were on Yeah, I know, I just, I wasn't into it. I was into the other two. <laughs> Erica slays back. it's a good show. I guess at that time I wasn't in, yeah. Really? I like Luke and Lauren, I like Tad, you know, Tad. Tad Martin, Tad the he, Cat. He was cool. He the, still is on that show, I yeah, love that. Yeah, he hasn't called me back, but that's all right. <laughs> um, Michael, call him back, would you? Right. Now, congratulations, I hear you're having another baby. She could be having the baby right now, as a matter of fact. At this moment? At this moment. Well, thanks for flying out here in the midst of this. She, uh, Are you flying back right away? Mm, yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah. I hope. Yeah. Um, she should have it this week. You have one baby already? Yeah, she's four and a half. A girl. Would you like to see a picture? I would love to see a picture. Do you have one? Yeah. I, I just happen to have one here. Good. The proud dad. I enjoy that. Yeah. What's her name, that baby? Her name's Kaylee. Kaylee. What a beauty. With the pony, which my son said to me yesterday. Mommy, can you buy me a pony? I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Where am I going to put a pony in my apartment? She wants a pony, too. Well, I... this is her pony, isn't it? No, no, no. We, we just... It's somebody... a pony ride. Or yeah, something like that. But we just... <laughs> we, we, we just... <laughs> it's a little vague, but it's okay. You don't have to tell me where you got the pony. It's not like a no. scandalous thing. We, we just, we just uh, bought her four bunny rabbits, though. Oh, yeah, does she yeah. like them? Animals, oh, yeah. Geez. My son wants a gerbil. Really? Can I tell you something? Over my dead body. <laughs> <laughs> a little rodent like that in my house. No way in God's green earth. Well, we have, we have, two, we have a Great Dane. A Great Dane, wow. An uh, English bulldog who looks like a pig, but he's beautiful. We have two cats, four bunnies, fish. We just got rid of our snakes. And, uh... <laughs> We're just like, you know, my wife loves animals. Yeah, and what, is this baby a boy or a girl, do you know? I'm gonna have two girls. Yeah. Two girls, congratulations. Well, I hope that you get home in time. Oh, let's hope. Yeah, it's delightful to have you here. There's a woman in the front row who is crazy about you. If she promises not to accost you, can she come down and greet you? Absolutely. Come on down, woman with the magazine. Stop crying, come, come down. Come here, come Hurry here. Hurry up, meet Maurice, come on. <laughs> She had this magazine. She wants you to sign it for her. Oh, look, the love in the afternoon. Next on General Hospital. All right, sit, talk to her in the commercial. She'd like you to sign that, would you? All right. Yeah, go ahead, sign that. Maurice, congratulations. Good luck. I'll see you at the Thanks. Emmys. Here's a pen for you. We'll be right back after this break and all the different outfits. <laughs> Rave reviews and a definite Tony contender for her role as Hildy in On the Town. Now I'm happy to say she's back on stage starring in the most fabulous story ever told. Please welcome the very funny Leah Delaria. <laughs> Sweets. They're hilarious. We give them a lot of candy product. Well, that's what keeps them up. Want the footstool? Yeah, because I'm a short one. I enjoy it too. Oh right? my god. There you go. See that? <laughs> Electronic and Star Trek. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Good a little to see crazy, you. But great. Are you why are you crazy? Um busy. Are you? Doing a whole lot. The show is really great, Leah, and you Thank are you. so great in it. It's called the most fabulous story ever told at the Manetta Lane Theater. And let's just ah. get it out of the way right at the beginning. I saw your boobs. <laughs> You are nude in this play from the waist <laughs> up, and weren't you scared to do that? Like it's the first time you've seen my boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I was on stage going, she's totally nude. I and was not. I'm coming, from the, 
my mother's watching this show. I'm covered from the waist down. No, but you, you it's not like you just happen to be like walking out of the shower. You stand and just deliver a whole soliloquy. I'm giving birth. That's I'm giving true. birth. And most women take their clothes off when they give birth. Right, right. I think they find clothes very confining while giving birth. Yes. I would imagine. So. Were you nervous at any capacity? Because you did not look nervous. Not at all. Not at all. Are you one of those, go to the beach, take uh, off your yeah, clothes, Yeah, I'm girls? one of those, like in Provincetown. Although you have to be careful because it's illegal at a lot of beaches. Yeah. To take, you know, in Provincetown where I do it a lot, which is a great, great beach if you ever want to go there. Uh, it's, a, it's a $50 fine if you show your breasts. I was like, what if you show one? Is it $25? Uh, <laughs> you know, and how come they don't find fat men? Because... <laughs> <laughs> They're breasts. They're breasts. Bigger than mine, let's face it. <laughs> now, are you so thrilled and nervous, the Tony considering? Oh, every, stop it. There's Don't a lot of buzz it. there. Are you, is, does it, Where's are, the wood? Wait, not the wood, yes. There. Wait, you are you are a shoe in everyone. Oh, you know. stop it. No, come on, I'm Leah. So... You've you got to know that, though. I'm too Italian for that. I'm way too superstitious for that. Have you yeah, been thinking? I'm nervous about it. Yeah, people, everybody says it. You said it to me the other night. You frightened me. You freaked me out. Wood, wood, wood. <laughs> yeah, I'm very nervous about it. And uh, it was like the greatest experience of my life to be on Broadway and to sing that song and I had like the weirdest thing happen. Do you know about this one? No, That what? this happened to me? Everybody's gonna think I'm weird. You're all gonna think I'm nuts. I know you are. You'll hear this story, but see, I'm Italian. We're very superstitious. I'm on stage. I'm singing I Can Cook too, which is the big number that I sing in the show. That you did here on the show. Right. And I did. I did it here. And um, it was the number, it was the song that made Nancy Walker famous back in 1944. Okay, so I'm on stage, I'm singing it, I'm having a really hot show, the audience is with me, and I look out in the audience and sitting like maybe six rows back, I see Nancy Walker sitting hold there. It, hold it. I know. She's dead. She's been dead for like six or seven years. Yeah, right. she's been dead. So I look out there and there's Nancy Walker sitting in the audience and it's not like Nancy Walker, like, oh, it's like, like Nancy Walker from Macmillan and Wife and Rhoda's Mother and Bounty, Nancy Walker. The quicker picker upper. The, quick, the quicker picker upper. And I'm looking and it's Nancy Walker and then I turn away and in my head I'm going, did I just see Nancy Walker smiling and enjoying the show? And then I look back and there was no one there remotely looking anything like Nancy Walker. So I'm convinced that the ghost of Nancy Walker was sitting there watching me do the show that night. Now, do you believe Smiling that kind and enjoying of stuff? It. Do you believe that sort of stuff? It could be why we closed. She was mad, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I really believe that sort I of do. stuff. I do. You believe in, like, I'm, angels I, and the whole... I believe in all of that. I believe in all of that, yeah. Well, I bet if she was there, she was enjoying you because you were the best thing in that show. Thank you. You and the red-haired boy who was also in this... this Jesse place. Tyler Jesse, Ferguson. Yes, he was wonderful Or Jesse as Tyler well. Moore as we like to call him. <laughs> uh, I had bronchitis that night and I still feel guilty on the town. I left it into mission because I had bronchitis, but I saw all your numbers. Thank you. Because you were mostly in the first act. No, I had numbers in the second act. You, you missed did? them. You did? Oh, yeah. but I had bronchitis. That's why we closed, because Rosie left it in her mission. <laughs> That's why we closed. But I'll see this twice. Will that make up for it? <laughs> yeah. It will. Because you want to see my boobs twice. You know it! You know it! Well, I was, I have to say, I was seeing your boobs thinking to myself, she has the kind of courage I do not possess because boobs to the wind. And, it was, and I kept looking around. Nobody else was as distracted. I, Those are her boobs. <laughs> Well, it's a, there was this little old lady. This is we were having a matinee, and you know you can tell how old the crowd is by the by the amount of reflection from the from the glasses that people are wearing that come back at you. So the median age of this audience was about dead, and uh, <laughs> it was a matinee group, lots of blue-haired old ladies. And um, I walk out, and the light comes up, and I start the monologue, and I hear this like little old lady about three rows back go, "Oh my lord." <laughs> and I thought, and I almost started laughing because I know she was just freaking out because she just saw Hildy's boobs from on the town. I know that's what it was. It she could have been. <laughs> well, you're wonderful in the show, and I know that you, like I, love Judy. I, I love know. her more. I know you do. And I, can, I love her most. I will give you that you love her most, but I love Liza more than you love her. We are saying Garland. That's not like Judy Tenuta. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we're, we're talking. Not that we don't like Judy Tenuta. <laughs> We do mean Garland. <laughs> yes, and um, I got you a little something. What? That you don't have from my own collection. What? I know you don't have this. Oh, my God. Do you have that? No, this is like a collector's that item. That is a collector's item, and it's for you because I had to leave it into mission from on the town, and I feel guilty. You are... There you go. Give me a high five. Now, Leah is a very good singer, which a lot of people, including me, didn't know before she got a chance to sing on Broadway and on the town. We're gonna take a break, you compose yourself, she's gonna sing a little something. Leah Delaria, the most fabulous story ever told. Don't go away. Good, huh? She is 
singing Blue Skies from our upcoming film, Edge of 17, Leah Delaria. Come on down and get a dog.